In this video, I will show you how you too can make op trading your cash flow machine. I'll do that by sharing with you exactly how much cash flow we made trading options in May. I will also share with you two trades that will help you see two techniques that you can use to put more cash into your pocket every single month. Here you see every op trade we did last month in May. The red box is the trades we're going to talk about in detail because they'll give you some ideas on how you can maximize the cash flow that you pocket each month by selling options. I encourage you to watch till the very end of this video because that's where I'll show you exactly how much cash flow we put into our pocket from selling options as well as the return that we received on our capital at risk and the margin requirement. The first ops trade I know you're going to find interesting is an IBM. Here's the daily chart on the day that we sold this cash secured put option. If you want to be a long-term successful ops trader that consistently pulls money out of the market and puts it into your pocket, knowing when to sell options is vital. First, Notice that IBM appeared to be stuck in a wedge. Every time it got close to the upper white arrow, it found resistance. On the other hand, since December, or over the past six months, every time it got in the vicinity of the arrow on the bottom, it found support. Looking at the far right of the chart, we saw that IBM had declined over the past two days and was right back at the lower part of this wedge that had served as support for it over the past six months. Once I saw that, I looked at the weekly chart and saw the same wedge, as you can see here, represented by the two yellow arrows. In addition to that, down the volume section in the yellow box, I noticed that over the past five months, the pressure was predominantly coming from the buyers as represented by all the green bars. I felt pretty confident that if IBM did continue to decline, that it would most likely find support around the lower part of this wedge, which is right around $125. Here you see the alert that I sent out to my patrons as soon as I knew this trade went through. On May 19th, we sold the third Friday of June $125 cash secure put option. For that, we were paid $2.47 per share. Fast forward just eight days, and this is what the chart looked like. Notice that the day after we did this trade, IBM did decline to right at the lower part of that wedge as we had expected. Then it took off, so that eight days later, it was then right back at the top of this wedge. Notice that down in the volume section, in the white box, the volume was increasing as IBM went up, so it's still looking bullish. However, at that point, the option that we sold for $2.47 per share was then only worth $0.32 cents per share. So as you see in this alert, we closed this position out on May 27th at a cost of $0.32 cents per share. So we were able to put a net of $2.15 per share into our pocket minus commission. If you analyze that return, for the eight days that we're in this trade, it equates to a 78% annualized, non-leveraged return on the capital that we had at risk. If you're curious about what the return on the margin requirement was, here you see that the margin requirement was at most $1,405. So if you annualize that return, it equates to a 698% annualized return on margin. By the way, if you want to be a more profitable stock and options trader, please do yourself a favor and hit the subscribe button and bell notification. If you're finding value in this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up like button as well. The next trade is one that went against us in a pretty big way. But the trade has a unique twist as well as a tip that I want to make sure that I share with you that I know will help you when trades go bad on you. And the blue box is that we initially sold this cash secure put option in Canadian National Railway, ticker symbol CNI, back at the end of April by selling cash secured puts on April 26th and April 28th. Fast forward a month to May 16th, the day before we actually rolled this cash secure put option, and this is what the chart looked like. Notice at the white arrow that Canadian National had declined to around $110 per share. So the put option we sold was between $3 and $5 per share in the money. Since our main option expiration day is the third Friday of the month, about two weeks before that, we go through every position that we are in and go ahead and set limit orders to roll those positions if we plan to roll them out for the next month. Since Canadian National has started showing weakness the week before, I knew that I wanted to roll the strike price down to 110 if at all possible. However, we also like to do that for credit. We always want to get paid. Here's the limit order alert that I sent out to our patrons the day before this trade went through. In the yellow box, so that we had an order sitting out there to buy back the May 20th 115 cash secure put option and simultaneously sell the June 17th 110 put option for a limit credit price of 50 cents per share. The next day, on May 17th, Canadian National jumped in price all the way up to $117 per share. When that happened, we didn't have to be sitting at our computer because we had a limit order sitting out there in the system from the previous day and it got filled for us. So we were able to roll our cash secure put option strike price down by $5 and still pocket $0.50 cents per share. Notice what happened though two days later. 
Canadian National spiked up just long enough to give us the opportunity to get our limit order filled, and then it went right back down to 110 and ended up closing expiration week right around 113 per share. If you have orders that you'd like to roll out, maybe even positions that have gone against you, go ahead and set a limit order at a price that you'd be happy to get filled at and let us sit out there for a week or better yet, two weeks before expiration. You just never know when a stock might jump up in price, which will let you adjust the position so it's more advantageous to you, all while still pocketing some nice cash flow. And if you didn't have that limit order sitting out there and you weren't at your computer, that order would not have gotten filled. Now I'll share with you exactly how much cash we put into our pocket last month from selling options and collecting dividends. At the bottom of the sheet in the blue box, so that as a result of selling options, we put a net of $20,670 cash into our pocket. However, I wanted to mention to you that we had a covered call position in Atlantica Sustainable, ticker symbol AY, in which we had been assigned this stock at $35 per share. We had been selling covered call options in it at the $30 per share strike price because the stock had had a big decline. However, as a result of a recent strong increase in price, the stock was called away from us at $30 per share. As a result of all the put options, covered call options, and dividends that we had received in that company, we ended up walking away with a net loss of only 32 cents per share, or $259 on this overall position, as you can see there in the blue box. However, the stock was called away from us at $5 per share less than what it was assigned to us at. But as a result of buying and selling options, including buying back to close the ones that expired last month and selling to open new options, we collected a net of $20,671, as you can see in the blue box. To the right of that, in the orange box, said trading commission cost us $140.43. Just below that, in the purple box, you see that market data cost us $32.75. To the bottom left, in the green box, so we collected $737 in dividends from the three covered call positions that we are in. And to the right in the black box, you see we collected $6.17 in interest from cash was sitting in our account because interactive brokers finally started paying interest again on our cash. So in all, as a result of selling options, collecting dividends, and a little bit of interest, we put a net of $21,240.99 into our pocket in May. If you analyze that return for the approximately $1.1 million that we had at risk, it equates to a 22.7% non-leveraged annualized return on capital. If you're curious about what the return on the margin requirement was, if you analyze the return on the $124,630 margin requirement, it equates to a 201% annualized return on margin. If you'd like to get an alert as soon as we do trades similar to the ones I showed in this video, check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you really want to take your option trading to the next level, it's vital that you know how to fix stock and option positions that have gone against you. To help you do that, check out the video series at the link above in the description below entitled Option Repair Strategies. In that video series, I share with you a lot of the secrets and tips that I use to fix positions that have gone against me. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.